Welcome to the Daily Word for the Lent. Today's reading is from the Book of Isaiah, chapter sixty-five, verses seventeen to twenty-one. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice for ever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy, and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them; they shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. This is the word of the Lord. New heavens and new earth. Having just heard today's scripture reading just now, are there words that especially struck you, or did we miss what has just been read? Is it because we find it difficult to focus and listen attentively with all the distracting thoughts running through our minds? My spiritual practice has always been to read the scriptures as a way for me to enter into. And keep silence, to contemplate and meditate. And so, for today, let's spend one more minute in looking at today's scripture reading. Take notice of words and phrases that make an impression. What struck me the most from this passage is new heavens and a new earth, and it may very well be the same for many brothers and sisters. New heavens and a new earth do make quite the attraction, something we deeply yearn for. But what does this new heavens and a new earth of the Bible mean? When will new heavens? And a new earth be realized. Ancient Chinese poet Tao Yunming composed the Beech Blossom Spring in hopes of creating and bringing into existence a haven, not unlike the utopias writers of the Western world had created. But the ideals of Beech Blossom Spring, or utopias. Are much too far-fetched and unrealistic. Through the history of men, we have seen constant warring between nations and peoples, and mankind has consistently abused natural resources and willfully harmed the environment. Why is human society so? When God created mankind and all things, did He not command mankind to take good care of this earth? But because of disobedience, people turned away from God and did not follow God's words. 
that sinful nature makes paradise, whether it is beech blossom spring or utopia, ever more unattainable and out of reach. Ultimately, none of our man-made rules, social systems, ideas, or different philosophies has been able to bring about any impact or fundamental change. The prophet Isaiah said that God held out His hands all day long to a rebellious people. Unless human beings recognize their sinful nature, repent, and return to God, expecting to stumble upon peach blossom spring or utopia, is mere self-deception. God has never forsaken men. And he so loved the world. God is faithful, and so are the promises he made for those who repent. As Isaiah had declared, "For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered, or come to mind. But be glad, and rejoice for ever." In what I am creating. Thanks be to God. In the new heavens and the new earth, created by God, men will no longer weep, cry in distress or hate. And in God's new heavens and the new earth, we can be full of God's blessings, and abide in His love for evermore. Amen. Let us have a time of reflection. Given that as Christians we place our hope in the new heavens and new earth, promised by God as our ideal and eternal home, what attitude should we have in living in today's world? Should we face the realities of our now? In passivity, or should we proactively seek renewal and change? As the Lord's disciples, we find ourselves situated in the realm between ideals and realities, living in the gap between heaven. And earth. How can we put into practice our ideals and missions, grounded in our works, without conforming to the ways of the world? We have been brought into this current world. Called to live in the here and now, is God's call to us to find a paradise elsewhere on earth, or are we called to strive to build the kingdom of heaven here, right where we are situated? Let us pray. Almighty God. The Son Jesus Christ once humbled Himself, took on the flesh in becoming man, lived with mortals, confronted the temptations and challenges of the sinful world, and brought the kingdom of heaven into the world. He died on the cross for men's redemption, and on the third day He resurrected in all His glory. We pray for the grace of our Lord, so that we can rid ourselves of our dark ways, and so we can adorn the armor of Christ, so that when the new heavens and new earth created by the Lord come into being, we can receive through the resurrection of the Son new life, and to attend the feast the Lamb of God has prepared. And enter into eternal life. 
in our Saviour, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.